Okay, I just wanted to talk a little bit about joints um, and just basic stuff that I do. Um, everybody's got their own way of dealing with joints and joint rotations and joint rotate axis. Um, so some things have popped up recently that, you know, there's a lot I don't know, but there's sort of like tricks and whatever you want to call it that just how I work and uh, seems to work for me. Um, so one thing is you'll notice when you draw a joint chain, uh, see, I'll go back to skeleton, create joints. You know, if you draw them in, um, you know, your perspective, you're going to get something weird. I, I try to never do that because um, it's always going to try and find a plane to put them on. And often that's not what you want. Um, you know, granted, you can use, um, let's get me an alligator's cool, right? Uh, hey, where is he? I never use this tool, sorry. Uh, how about a, how about that? There we go, cool. Um, one of the things that's pretty cool is this thing, you know, in your snapping, you can turn on center. And that is cool, because what it will try and do, and I still don't do this, but what it'll try and do is find the middle and put your joint there, right? Uh, and you'll see that how the icon has changed a little circle to see that it's matching. Uh, but if you're doing something like this back leg here, um, that can get a little difficult. Like you're gonna click there, right? It should place it somewhat where you want it. That's not a great place, but that's where I'm gonna put it. But if I wanna get this knee, you know, not terrible. It depends on how accurate you wanna be with your rig, right? Um, but the resulting joint chain is not gonna be something that I'm going to use. Um, just because I know that the rotations are gonna be off and stuff like that. So I've been experimenting with getting better uh, local rotation axis. And so what you always want to do when working with joints is turn on the local rotation axis. You can do this for all objects or anything with a DAG or a transform on it. Um, so if you go into transform display, there's a thing called local rotation axes. I have it here as part of my, um, my hotkeys. So I can just quickly, oh, sorry, select HI to select hierarchy, right? So I get my hierarchy and then toggle rotation axes. And then if for whatever reason, you know, what I have found is when I'm working on my rigs, I'll have a whole bunch of little uh, LRAs showing for all my characters, but or all my joints, but maybe not all of them, and it gets a little confusing. So I just put in here this toggle dash state zero dash local axis. And basically what that's gonna do is just turn them all off. That way you don't end up with like some showing, not showing, because if you're animating, you don't wanna see those things. Um, anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and show them on both these joint chains. And I just wanted to point out a few things uh, and hopefully how to fix them. Um, if you look at this tail joint that I did, uh, which way does he go? There we go, cool. You notice that that last one is set to, we're gonna call it like world space. Uh, it's not really world space, but um, it, it's not critical that this last joint, well, it depends on how you bind, but normally it's not critical that that last uh, local rotation axes matches the rest of your joint chain. However, I do like to have it um, match because often what I'll do is I'll just do a select HI and then rotate. And you notice that when I try and what I'm thinking is my X is not, it's actually my Y, right? But then that last joint doesn't match. So I'm getting unexpected results. Um, again, it depends on how you rig. It depends on how you use that last joint. A lot of people never animate the last joint. They use it as like a null. Um, so it was like, if this was like a finger, that would be the very tip of the finger, uh, just so it selects, it uh, eats up some of the um, the weighting when you weight it. You don't need it, but a lot of the weighting algorithms like having that last joint there. Um, you've probably found that if you you know bind something uh, and you don't have that last joint, you know when you go to bend this, you get this weird um, softening or, or 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 shrinkage of the the finger joint. Uh, that you don't want. So often I'll go and make sure that that last joint is matching all the others. And also in this case, these, the Y is aiming down. Um, for something like a tail or something like that, or even like hips, I like to try and match it to world space uh, instead. And also, uh, lastly, I would also normally build this joint chain straight and not, uh, not trust that that center snapping did a great job. So, uh, what I'm going to do is actually just select all these guys and I want to fix the joint chain. So 
As you know, in Maya, most people write mail scripts to do stuff. A lot of them are very basic. Um, I'm just like everybody else. I have made a Python script here for quickly, you know, changing my local rotation axes and stuff like that. You don't have to use a script to do that. There are different ways to do it. Um, for years and years and years, I've done it this way. So if you actually go into your component mode and turn everything off, the very last thing you have here is a little question mark. If you right click on that, you'll see it says local rotation axes. So this is your selection hierarchy. When you're in component mode, it's not quite as uh, hierarchical as in when you're in your uh, object space. So object space like selection handles and IK handles will always be, if you do a marquee select, whoops, if you do a marquee select, you're gonna get those things first, then you're gonna get joints, then you're gonna get curves, then you deal. Know, that's how it's supposed to work. It's been sort of fading a little bit uh, in current versions of Maya, but when you're in component mode, it's kind of like, select what you select. It's, it loses some of that hierarchy stuff. So what I do is I turn everything off and then I go in here and turn on local rotation axes. And what's cool about that, and if I have, you know, you'll see what happens if I select, first I select, I get the joint. Wait, let me start over. Okay, cool. Oh, deselect, cool. So the first time I select, the joint turns blue, but it looks like I've done nothing. And I'm hitting W-E-R and I'm getting nothing. But if I select again, you notice I now get a weird little, it's very hard to see because it stays the same size no matter what I do, uh, a little yellow uh, mark there, and that's my local rotation axis. And if I look at my uh, attribute editor here, what you're looking at is your joint orientation. So if I go in here and move this, you see that it's doing a couple different things. It's changing the rotate axis and it's changing the joint orient. So it's an offset between the two of them. If I go back to object mode, select this, this is my uh, rotate axis, let's say. And then if I go to component mode and move that over here, what I'm looking at for this rotation axis is actually the offset between them. Um, normally you don't want to have any values in here and I'll show you how to get rid of that in just a second. More importantly, is you don't want your axis to not go down your joint chain 99.5% you know, of the time. There are times I've built some mechanical rigs where I will have that could be completely different for the IK to work or for uh, FK to work um, because it's not a normal arm chain and it has some wonky, you know, you've seen uh, character rigs that have like bent, um, bent legs and stuff like that, that, you know, mechanically probably wouldn't work in real life, but you don't want to use a regular joint chain because you'd end up using a hundred joints just to make, you know, one or two that does what you want to do. So anyway, uh, when you move these things, uh, very important, you don't want to, uh, you almost always want to be in gimbal mode or wait, no, sorry. I guess you do want to be in object mode. Sorry. I used to use a gimbal. I'm so familiar with using gimbal. Okay. When you move it, you generally don't want to change it in your Z or your uh, Y if you're using standard uh, rotation orders. Sorry, my thing's blowing up. Um, but you can rotate in the X axis to get, you know, different uh, up values and things like that. And this does work with the snapping. So you hold down J. I'm going to snap at 15 degrees, I think, by default. If I open up the rotate tool, uh, one thing that you really want to be aware of with the rotate tool, I gotta show geometry. Hello. Uh, is that when you are using snapping, right? Uh, I think by default, and this is sort of strange to me, I'm gonna hold down J. Okay, it's set to relative. That's what you want. I think by default, it might be set to absolute. And that can be a little bit, most of the time you don't want that. So say I have an object like this, and I just want to, you know, snap it over in degrees for whatever reason. Um, if I have it set to absolute, snapping, I have to turn it on to see it. Uh, and I do this, watch what happens when I go to snap it. Did you see that first little movement I made? So that first little movement it's making is setting to an absolute rotation. Um, but if I have it set to relative, and I do that same thing. Oop, I was a little quick, so let me go slower. It's only gonna snap 15 degrees from that original location, which is what you want. Um, the other way, it's gonna snap to something and then do 15 degrees implements. 
and you can change what that value is. So make sure you have it on relative. Otherwise, you'll get that guy uh, trying to snap to an absolute position and then snapping to the new position. Okay, so let's say I want all these guys to have Y up. And this used to work, but I don't think it works anymore. So let's try it. Oh, cool, it did. Uh, I think, yeah, I just can't marquee select. Uh, I think you used to be able to marquee select and get all of them in a hierarchy, but now I have to hold down shift and go up the joint chain. I can probably go down the joint chain. Yeah, that works as well. Cool, I'm not gonna worry about the last one yet. I'm gonna hit E, hold down J, snap, 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 snap. Cool. Uh, make sure it's how you want it, which when it built, since it wasn't straight, you see that I get a little bit of weird curvature there. So again, this is also something I would probably wouldn't do. I would normally build that joint chain straight. However, in a pinch, you can do this sort of stuff. And let's say you're like, you know what? I'm just gonna go in here and risk it all and try and get these guys aligned because I need this perfect, this joint chain to, to look like that. Well, that's fine. All right, so the first thing you'll notice is that you do have degree information in your rotate axis as well as in your joint orient. I, I tend not to care what's in the joint orient, but I do want my rotate axis to match. And basically what that means is if I look at my translates here and I'm in object space for my translates, and it doesn't matter what you're in for, for your rotates, uh, is that the X, Y, and Z match what you're getting uh, for your joint chain. So I'm sure there's a way somewhere to do this, but I learned a long time ago, just use a very, very, very simple L uh, script, which is joint dash E dash ZSO. And what you'll see is that now I have these guys lining up and there's no more information in my rotate axis. So if I select everything and run that script, you'll see that now all my uh, rotates make sense the way I would I would want them to be. Whoops. So your, your translates and your rotates now match each other. Except for, of course, our last one we haven't done yet. So the last one here, if I run that script, you'll see it matches the way it is. Uh, but I do want it to match its parent. So something to remember in Maya is that your parents are the same thing as your world. So it becomes your new world space when you get parented, if that makes sense. By default, if you're unparented, your world space is, uh, you know, the default Maya universe. If you parent something, that's now become your new world. And this is where people get a little bit confused, but it's not a big deal. So if I go into skeleton, orient joint, I can go in here and I can say orient, I think I already, let me just reset it. Yeah, cool. I'm gonna say orient joint to world. And when I do that, you see now it matches to the original and it also does that ZSO for me by default. This tool will do, do that. Um, I don't always use the orient jo joint options tool. I usually just do it by hand or use my little script. And just so you know, this little script, all this is saying is rotate 90. That's it, nothing else. And you'll notice that it doesn't do my ZSO because there are times I don't want that to match. Uh, for instance, if you're doing arms on a character, so let's say that we were happy with this and we do a mirror on that skeleton. Again, this is the kind of thing I end up scripting, but it's no big deal. Uh, you know what, let's name them real quick. Uh, let's call them L leg and underscore joint. I always do that so that I have, you know, uh, side, uh, what it is, and then use uh, padding of two. When I mirror this, if I have left and right, it now has right over here. And what I want you to take a look at, even though my orients, uh, my local rotation axes are not correct, um, but I will fix that. Actually, you know what? Change that to behavior. Bam, there we go. That is what I want, uh, even though this is not what I want my leg to actually be. Um, if I look at that now, uh, you can see that my uh, axes are actually aimed X up, which is what we want for our rotations, right? That makes sense. If I was to grab the both hips and bring them up, that's the desired behavior. Uh, behavior, not orientation. Um, however, if I'm doing anything with stretching or anything like that, I generally don't want negatives on my uh, translate axis. So your joints should only have 
you know, not your parent joint because that's in its world space, uh, but your children joints should only have information in their translate X because that's going to be the length of the joint. And usually that's what people are using to determine any sort of stretching and things like that with the math. So uh, rather than have it be negative, and also I think, let me just see, yeah, probably not what I want if I'm an animator and I want to move this, these guys, granted, this would be in the rig, not on the joint, but it's okay, it's on the joint right now. That's probably not the desired behavior, at least it isn't for me. So what I'm gonna do is just grab all these guys and hit component mode and bing, bang, boom. All right, I've got all three of them. I'm gonna hold down J, snap, 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 snap. And now they've gone the opposite direction, which again is not what I want for orientation, but it is what I want for translation. I'm gonna go up here and say joint dash use as DSO. Now my local rotation, or my uh, rotate axes should have like a 180 in them. Oh wait, I haven't changed them back, sorry. And now I'm gonna grab all these guys again, component mode, sorry. And I'm gonna drive it back to what it was. Make sure you're holding J. And I think I gotta do one more. If I had set my uh, rotations to something like 90 or 45, it may have been easier. Uh, you know, but I leave it at default because I often, as I move from studio to studio, I may not remember to set that. So I kind of just leave it at 15 so I know I'm probably going to have 15 there. If I remember, I'll set it to 45, but often I'll just leave it there. Okay. So now if I look at these guys, you see in my X value, I have 180 on all of them, but I do have my translations going the right, right way. And that's why in the tool that I've written, I will only rotate. I won't do the ZSO because I want a different value and I'm cool with having that rotate axis information in there. Um, other programs might, you know, balk at this. Um, I was recently using Unreal. Unreal doesn't seem to care at all, uh, but that's also because I'm super new to Unreal, so I don't know yet. Okay, so I'm actually going to stop the video there because I have a lot more to talk about with joints and joint orientation and things like that, naming joints other things, um, but I do have to get to work. So what I'm going to do is pause the video there. Uh, if you have any questions about what I've gone over so far, please let me know. Uh, if you like what you've seen so far, please let me know. Um, and I'll put up a part two sometime soon uh, about adjusting your uh, rotation angles. Um, but yeah, for now, I think I'm going to stop that there because it, I don't want to ramble uh, any more than I already have. And um, yeah, I hope that helps.